Thanks everybody for for coming in. Um, uh, as, you, as you know, we're we're here to to talk through our decision uh, to let Chris Woodward go as our as our major league manager, uh, and to uh, we've asked Tony Beasley to be our, our interim manager. Uh, let me talk a little bit about about Woody first. Um, I think it goes without saying for all of you that that have. You know, work with him on a regular basis, and certainly the way he's represented himself on the field with our fan base, in the community with our players. Um, he's represented us, in the organization, with, with class and dignity at, at every turn. Um, he brought an unparalleled energy, uh, passion, work ethic, uh, a genuine care for, for people, uh, for the players. Um, he was the same person every day with everybody. Uh, and uh, just a real positivity in, in what were really challenging circumstances uh, from the, the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, the, a, a rebuild, a multi-year rebuild that, he, that he's helped lead us through, um, and the lockout this year. So um, you know, great uh, appreciation and admiration for, for the work he's put in and, and helped us uh, in taking these steps. A little bit about expectations, I think that you know, when you make these decisions, there's always a, um, you know, where you're at relative to expectations. I think first, and we've been, I think, pretty straightforward with, with our with our fan base, with you all in the media, that, you know, we did not, uh, from a from a, as a leadership team, you know, CY and myself, ownership, you know, we did not come into the season uh, thinking we had, uh, you know, put together a, a championship roster. We we thought we'd we'd taken a major step forward in, in a uh, and talent from where we were a year ago, um, we certainly had uh, aspirations, maybe to overachieve some, and still do have those. Um, but we were, you know, and, and continue to be realistic about about where we are. Um, that said, I, we do think that we're, you know, we can be better than our record, um, and, and better than the way that we've played at times. Uh, and, and so that kind of leads to making the decision now. Uh, rather than they waiting to the end of the year, and that we think we have an opportunity to begin addressing some of uh, some items um, with a with a change in leadership style. Really, we're talking about kind of a how we prepare uh, the style of play, um, the structure in which we we put together our pregame that ultimately leads to how uh, our you know, our players take the field and, and what our fans see every night. Um, we think Tony's the right person at this point. Uh, to lead us um, uh, for, for this season, um, he has uh, you know all the attributes that, that we're looking for. Uh, he has the respect of the staff, uh, the respect of the players. Uh, he's an intelligent baseball veteran who's won at the minor league level, performed in a, in a variety of roles, uh, both both here and elsewhere. Uh, and I think as we look uh, towards this transition to to build some momentum into next year, he, he's the right person for us. Uh, as we move forward, so you know, again, I want to I want to thank Woody on behalf of, of you know, CY and ownership, our entire leadership team. I want to thank Woody again uh, for all of his efforts uh, into moving us forward. Um, and uh, kind of, I think we can start with questions. So raise your hand. Wait for the microphone. Uh, for either one of you, just the, the timing of this and kind of the thinking behind that, why it was important to make this move at this point in time. Yeah, Emily, it's, uh, I think most importantly, uh, we want to build momentum into 2023. I think there are some really positive things that are happening. Uh, we like um, some of the things that we're seeing. Uh, but we recognize there are things that we need to address moving forward. And we could either wait till after the season. Um, or we could get ahead of that and start addressing those things now and creating momentum into next year. And uh, we chose uh, to do the latter in that regard. Um, I think that's really ultimately why we chose uh, to do it now versus wait to the end of the season. Jeff? When, when you talk about the preparation, um, how does that change when it's the same staff? Uh, what, what changes need to be made to help them prepare uh, to take the field every day that you guys were just speaking of? I think it's just the overall structure, the environment. Um, it's not necessarily the content of the preparation, but um, but 
the way it's utilized, uh, you know, the way we utilize meetings, the way we utilize um, different resources throughout the day, um, creating a structure uh, that's really tailored towards winning a game um, every single day uh, when we come in. And we felt like at times that got a little loose. Um, you know, uh, but ultimately, I think that Bees um, will be the right person to um, to get the best out of our staff and our players moving forward for the last um, 48 games. Yeah, John, uh, to the fans who would say you fired the manager, why is John Daniels still here after six straight losing seasons? Why does he not get any accountability for this? What, is that a fair question? Yeah. And what would you say to that? One absolutely fair question. Um, you know, I kind of separate accountability and responsibility, and I take a lot of responsibility for um, our performance over the last six years. Um, and we, we haven't been good enough. Uh, as far as you know, my role in the organization, one, you know, we have made a, a, a meaningful change in that and, uh, and bringing in, in CY and his role and, uh, as, well, as well as others. But you know, ultimately, uh, you know, this, is a, this is a team effort. Um, it's never when we were good, it wasn't about me. Um, it, it's always been a team effort, and I, I think we have a ways to go. We have a lot of good people here. And as far as my personal uh, you know, accountability or situation, I think that's something we will address down the line. Evan. To, um, to the point, without going into specific examples, Chris, but you, you mentioned it's gotten loose a little bit at some point in time. So, J.D., you mentioned not played well at times. Do you feel like that's been a season-long issue, or do you feel like that's something that has kind of ramped up or been more evident in the last six weeks or so? Well, I think it's a combination, Evan. I mean, I think it's reflective in the way we've played to some degree over the past six weeks. Um, I think, you know, coming into um, – you know, the all-star break, we were in okay position. We've fallen off, obviously. And I think that um, we see some things that we can tighten up in terms of um, reaching championship standards. And uh, really, that's uh, a big part of this decision. Uh, it's no um, no fault of Woody's uh, necessarily. Uh, sometimes it just takes a different style, a different leadership voice uh, to achieve those things. And um, that's why we made the decision. Mike? Just to pick up on the leadership style, what, what type of – voice are you looking for and does that voice long term tend to come from somebody who already has major league managerial experience? Well I think we're focused on the present right now. We know that uh, Tony is the right person to stabilize us and um, help us finish strong here um, and beyond that we'll uh, address really the the search um, as it relates to external candidates um, you know after the season. And Along those lines, who why is is Tony? Uh, you know, is he managing here in an interim basis to become a candidate, or would you expect that he just automatically is a candidate at the end of the season? Yeah, John, I, I think that yes, he is a candidate, and I think that um, his record um, in terms of wins and losses will not necessarily reflect uh, the level to which he is a candidate. I think that we're looking for more than that and the impact in the clubhouse and the environment as much as we are. Uh, on the field. Other questions? Uh, let's go back to Emily. Have you all had conversations with players um, either leading up to this decision or since the decision was made and what he was informed? I mean, uh, Tony has uh, today, just briefly. I mean, it's been a number of, of conversations between when we spoke with, with Woody earlier and, and obviously meeting here with, with you guys. Um, so uh, we met with the team briefly, um, and, and, and Tony had a ch CY was able to, to address them, and, and as well as Tony. Uh, Tony, I think, has had a chance to talk with a couple of, of players, but we haven't, beyond that, we have not. Go back to Evan here. You guys, another kind of buzz buzz phrase has been championship culture, right? We've talked about championship culture for the past few years. What of a championship, why hasn't a championship culture kind of taken root here? Well, it doesn't happen overnight, Evan. I mean, it's a, pro it's a process. And, um, you know, I think some of that is um, based on, uh, you know, where we were last year and committed to a rebuilding process. It doesn't happen overnight. And we recognize, as J.D. said, we didn't expect to take, um, 
you know, go worst to first uh, this season. Um, the culture builds, and Woody has had an impact on that culture, a very positive impact in a lot of ways. Um, this is about moving forward, um, what the next step is in building that culture, and um, we feel that the time is right, and, uh, and that was a big part of the decision. Chris, I know you said the, the manager search is down the line, but I'm, I'm sure there will be discussions in the meantime. It, can you tell us a little how that works between you and JD? Is it collaborative? Is it your decision? Is it his decision? It, it's, it's a full partnership. Absolutely, we, and that's not, it's beyond me and JD. It's our um, entire front office, it's our ownership. Um, it'll be an extensive uh, process that we uh, put together involving a number of people. As JD said, we win as a team, we lose as a team, and uh, certainly uh, we will be on the same page um, in terms of who we choose to manage uh, the team moving forward as we have been today with Tony. Yes, uh, for either one of you, uh, with this change in managers, uh, do you have a specific objective for the last 48 games uh, for in order to strengthen Beasley's uh, chances of landing the job full-time? Do you have any specific expectations uh, for the remainder of the season? Well, I think most importantly, we want to continue to create a competitive, energetic team that takes the field uh, night in, night out, prepared to win. And, um, you know, I think that... Uh, we want to see improvement in our fundamentals, um, just the basic fundamentals. I think it's something that you know we haven't executed those to the level we need to uh, to become a championship team. Um, concentration in those areas, and then you know just from a teammate aspect, making sure that we create an environment where um, our players, our staff, um, all of us as an organization, um, bring out the best in one another. I think those are the three main things. So Jeff and then Eric. So. What was the conversation like with Chris, and how did he uh, take the news? Um, he, he was, man, as you would expect, an unbelievable professional. Uh, was you know, we, two of us sat down with him earlier, um, you know, uh, emotional on some level, but um, you know, he was really appreciative of the of the opportunity. You know, we talked about. Uh, a little bit of kind of where we are as a club, and you know, I think he he shares the opinion that you know we're not as far off as our record may indicate, and um, you know we we thanked him a lot of the same way some same things I said earlier. We thanked him uh, directly, and um, you know and then he had an opportunity to, to talk to some of the staff members and talk to other people he wanted to uh, connect with. I think Jeff, um, as JD said, he handled it with class, with dignity, with integrity. Uh, nothing but a positive attitude. He's a tremendous human being, tremendous person, and um, very grateful for for the leadership he's provided us. See why I'm wondering if you can share with us what your message was when you addressed the team. Yeah, I don't want to get into too many specifics there, Eric. Um, but ultimately, this is about moving forward um, and how we want to finish the season. And we felt like. Uh, Bees is the right person uh, to create the best environment possible for us to, to have a, a solid finish here. Yeah, uh, well, the coaching staff remain the same, and who's going to be your third base coach? Uh, Corey Ragsdale is going to move from first base to third base, um, and uh, Josh Johnson is going to come up from our minor league system and will coach first base as well as coaching the outfielders. The rest of the staff remains the same. Yeah, I'm just curious. I know you mentioned you spoke to the team. Um, obviously, Corey coming here, uh, Woody was kind of a big you know, part of that decision. Uh, did Seeger say anything in that discussion with the team? And is there any concern that that might you know, muddy the waters a little bit, relationship-wise? We'll keep individual conversations um, private. Um, and we're um, not worried about any waters being muddied. Bill. How do you account for the lack of success in one-run games this season and lack of success against the Astros, and were those factors in the decision? Um, first, the Astros are a really good team. That's probably the, the biggest. You know, they've extremely talented, and they play they play very well. And we've had a number of one-run games against them as well, but. Um, 
I think the, the one run games, there's an element of luck. I think there's also an element that you make your own luck. Um, and some of the um, uh, some of the small things that we are alluding to, uh, you know, I, there's rarely one element that goes into a, when a, when the game is close that is the reason why a, a game is either won or lost. Right? There's, a, there's so many events that happen. What would I think what CY touched on earlier, what we're talking about, and, and it impacts the, these one-run games, is the process and the, the the attention to detail, the fundamentals that lead up to those games. Where hopefully, you know, you're you're slow. Every time you do something right during a game, you're slowly moving the the odds a little bit more in your favor and allow your players to perform at, at their highest level. So, um, that's probably the best way I can answer that. We'll take a few more, Evan Grant. When you talk about preparation, do you feel like you guys need more uniformity in the way this team prepares? Are there too many guys preparing in different manners for the game? Does that impact anything? Well, I think, Evan, too, uh, I mean, <laughs> baseball is a unique sport where there's a team element and there's an individual element. And um, as a former player, I can relate to both. And so I think there's a balance of um, allowing each individual to prepare uh, in ways they need to, and then collectively uh, making sure the team's on the same page to um, to understand exactly how a game is to be won that night. So um, it's not specific to one or the other. It's really a combination of both. We love our players having that um, individuality and freedom to prepare as they see fit, but also making sure that we get enough of the, the team preparation. Um, and that's not specific to, um, you know, I think more so that's on like the fundamental side and making sure that we're um, executing the plays that need to be executed on a nightly basis uh, to win, to, to reach a championship caliber. Oh, what are you hoping to gain the most clarity on as you close out the season here? Well, I think that, you know, obviously it's been, um, we've been tied up with the draft and trade deadline and um, haven't done um, we're not finished evaluating in terms of what this team needs moving forward to be a playoff caliber team in 2023. But I want to be very clear to our fans, that is our expectation. Uh, obviously, I think on the pitching side, we see uh, there's room for improvement. Um, you know, defensively, I think there's room for improvement there. And um, offensively, we've done some things really well, uh, but I think there's room for improvement in that um, facet of the game as, as well. So. You know, ultimately, I think improving each of those areas um, and doing it in a way that is consistent with um, a, a disciplined, fundamentally sound team is, you know, is, is the way we see this coming together. But I, I want to recognize um, the positives that have happened. I mean, I think we're fifth in the American League in runs scored. Um, our run differential is a negative two at this point, um, you know, with some small improvements, all of a sudden we're in a playoff race. And so um, maybe not, it may not be this year, but um, you know, we're, we recognize that this is probably closer than, um, we believe it's closer than maybe others do. Okay, we'll take two or three more, Jeff, and then Joan in the back. On everything you guys have said, especially in the open uh, pandemic season, rebuild, lockout, screwy spring, did Chris Woodward get a fair shake to be a manager? A successful manager. Yeah. Like I said, I think he had a challenging hand from a standpoint of, of um, ultimate wins and losses. Uh, you know, th those elements. Um, and really, the biggest one is just the rebuild. You know, that w we were kind of in between when he was hired. Um, uh, we, we really committed to a rebuild in the middle of his time here. Uh, he never. Yeah, he was fully on board with that. He embraced you know, kind of the move to a younger club. Um, uh, you know, I, to, I don't know your your term. You know how, how I would characterize it, but uh, I think he made the most of, of what he had to work with. Yeah, I mean, kind of in that line, you know, in the line of questioning is how much of this, and really just over the last few years, is on Woody so much as maybe the teams he was dealt, the lineups he was dealt, the roster. And then maybe to make this decision where it hasn't really come to fruition is, I'm, I'm just curious, where do you guys kind of reconcile that versus his coaching versus everything that's going on off the field? 
Yeah, I think to your point and about you know, Tim's point earlier, I mean, I think the the talent uh, and the the roster construction is a, is a bigger factor uh, in terms of our wins and losses over the last several years. Um, to you know, CY's point to a previous question, as far as as we look to move forward, you know, there are elements that we wanted to see addressed differently, um, and so th they're not. Um, uh, you know, I think both things need to be addressed, and so the accountability for the roster ultimately sits with with me and, and our group. Um, but the the style, uh, the way that we're going about improving our, our play on the field is what we're looking to address with this move. One more, if there's anything, <coughs> Levi. Last question. Just another question from like a, a timing standpoint. We talked to you guys a couple of weeks ago, right after the trade deadline, and you had been wrapped up in draft and deadline and everything else. You said you were not quite ready to make that evaluation. So I'm curious how much of this decision was based on evaluation from the last two weeks and how much of that was the ball already rolling and just kind of confirmed it's, it's been an ongoing evaluation. Anything else? Good. <laughs>